Pool is a book that I wrote. Pony Pool changed everything, a book I wrote it, uh, 10 years ago, 1998, I think. Uh, the film is uh, about a, a DJ on a radio station, small town radio station, set in Pony Pool, who was an expat from probably Toronto and used to be a bit of a shock jock and uh, kind of a talk back guy, and uh, who's at the end of, really, the end of his career, at the end of a kind of animal. That he is. I'm Grant Mazzy, and as always, I'll be taking no prisoner. We go to Ken Loney in the Sunshine Chopper. Ken. Ken? Are you there, Ken? This building has just been exploded. Oh my God! Hundreds of people are, are getting killed down there. Mysterious and enigmatic, violent events start to sort of rise up out of the ground in Pontypool and uh, they are left as uh, sort of a bit of a ground zero for what ends up being a kind of global story. Soldiers have set up roadblocks. Everybody has to stay inside at all times. And they sort of learn or they think they learn that uh, it's a virus that is uh, passed on through a uh, spoken word that is a, uh, an infected word that somebody hears or repeats and uh, causes infection and contagion in the other person. They cut into our signal. I wanted to treat the language virus not much differently than you would, uh, you know, the mutant radioactive missile that hit the cemetery. I wanted to make it, and I hope it works like this, so that it works like a frightening and sort of dangerous feeling story without having uh, without having to go to some other notion of of language or words or that sort of thing trying to be careful not to uh, feel elevation just because but you know at the same time having a kind of natural attraction to the potential of the idea of a language part Upon the Pool, the book is a very fractured sort of document. It's got pieces and slivers and fragments, and it, it, it has got sort of multiple perspectives and multiple beginnings and multiple sort of frames of reference. So it's not a very stable book, which was part of the challenge of turning it into a film. We had these discussions where the, the people were saying, well, this has nothing to do with the book. Well, the book has nothing to do with the book in some, in some ways. The book is kind of randomly related to itself. And, and so the film I always thought of as being a chapter that the book imagined or forgot or could fit in. When Bruce and I first started cooking up this film, there was very little zombie on the scene. And then, you know, stomp, 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 zombie comes back, and then zombie, more zombie, zombie, zombie. Everybody talks about Night of the Living Dead, or Dawn of the Dead, or Day of the Dead, or 28 Days Later, whatever. They talk about it in terms of it being this, it's a really a metaphor for, you know, clearly blah, 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 A is B. You know, of whatever communism, or red menace, or uh, global warming, or whatever it is that does that, right? To me, it's always been, here's the setup, here's the metaphor, here's the thing coming at you, la, la, la. But it's really a metaphor for metaphors that keep hunting you long after they've been meaningful. They keep coming at you, right? And so that's the thing that's always been interesting to me, is there are figures of speech that become predatory long after their sort of meaning as figures of speech have sort of left the, left the stage. And so, I mean, that to me is the interesting last, you know, 100 yards of a zombie's life. Uh, the most recent zombies I've, I've seen are in the mirror. The zombies I see now are in the mirror. Uh, you get older and you start to eat your own brain. Fact.